Hello, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining us for our Q2 Marco Empiles user group webinar. Want to uh, apologize that we're uh, presenting this 2 weeks into uh, Q3, but with uh, travel and schedules and the holiday. Uh, wanted to make sure that we had ample time and had ample time for our employee or our, our customers to attend. And so we thought it'd be best to uh, host this webinar after the 4th of July holiday break. We're super excited to uh, present to you today to you a new solution uh, that is brought to us by M files uh, with me today. I'll have Tracy Coleman, who is our software solutions manager and also Corey Gilliard, who will be doing a lot of the presentation today, who is one of our M files. <clears throat> business analysts, a couple housekeeping reminders. Um, all attendees are in listen only mode. <clears throat> we do encourage questions though. So if you do have questions, uh, please put those in the chat window and we will answer those questions throughout the webinar. We do not have to wait until the end. And uh, also at the end of the webinar, we will be drawing for a $25 Amazon gift card for everybody who is in attendance today. Want to thank you again uh, for taking some time out of your busy day, and I will turn it over to you, Tracy. Sounds great. Thanks again, Kurt, and thanks everybody for uh, taking some time out of your day to uh, review with us uh, a new solution, as Kurt had mentioned, available now through through M Files. Um, it is referred to as M Files Ment. Today, we are going to not only look at what that solution uh, overview is, but as Kurt had shared, Corey is going to give you a firsthand look at the solution and what it can do for your organization. In addition to uh, that, after the demonstration, we're going to move into um, a lot of resources available to uh, you as end users and users of, of M files, along with um, potentially new users. So, we will uh, dive into all of those resources that are available to you. So let's get started. M Files Ment. Um, first and foremost, it is available to all M Files customers. You don't need a certain um, licensure structure in order to uh, take advantage of of Ment. Um, it is uh, open and, and available to to uh, anybody of uh, that uses M Files. Um, as a, a module. It was acquired by M files and initially launched in February of 2023 and it's fully supported by M files. So you don't need to go out to another resource outside of Marco to really get you started and get you fully supported and, and ingrained into using the solution. It is 100% visual no code automation tool. So we're really seeing a lot of quick uh, adoption of the solution because it really is um, a, a tool that uh, staff can easily put into play. Obviously, Marco is here as a resource for you too to help you through the tricks of the trade. But ultimately, the goal of, of the solution and of MFOs was really to have it be a quick onboard. It really removes the barriers of uh, complex document automation processes, um, ensuring that you can take these repetitive tasks and really optimize them from a document construction stance. The documents that are able to be generated with Mint, they stay compliant with your best practices. So whether you're working with an NDA or a new customer agreement, um, the language within those documents, uh, you mitigate the, the versions that might be sitting out on users' desktops that might be a little bit dated as far as the legal terminology. It features an entire clause library that can be um, totally selected by uh, the users at time of collection and, and um, production of that document. But again, it's according to the, the uh, language that is required and, and uh, adopted by the organization. So a way for users to not necessarily have to wait for legal counsel or, or, or advice, um, but rather go to a collection of, of documents that they know are, are um, current and are approved of. Up on the screen, there are really three challenges that have been identified on really where you can see a, a good ROI of why to put a solution like Mint into place. 
Um, first of all, anytime you're requiring your stakeholder or client communication through email or through Word, um, not only does that slow down uh, the process, but also there is a risk for various errors throughout that. Um, and so being able to not have employees having to re-input the data to transfer to make sure that the documents are, um, are correct is really a, a game changer for M files meant. Speaking of challenge two, wasting time. Nobody likes to waste time, right? And so for your in-house legal counsel, um, creating those agreements over and over again um, is not only repetitive, but again, the, the risk associated to that is completely mitigated with a solution like MENT. Um, not needing to wait for legal counsel to draft the, the documents that are, are needed, um, that made from scratch, manual document creation. Again, using automation, using the tools within the solution to be able to deliver uh, accurate content out to your uh, end parties. And there is competition out there. So if you can deliver something that uh, looks professional, that has no errors in, that might uh, reference accidentally a, a, an incorrect date or an incorrect customer, um, that just makes your organization look even um, more professional. Um, and it also shows uh, a level of engagement to technology um, that you're really, um, you know, staying ahead of the curveball in the way that you can deliver documents, especially legal documents, out to, um, again, outside parties. Why do you choose MET? First and foremost, being able to plug in something uh, with no coding skills. We understand not everybody um, is comfortable in the IT world. Um, how can we take a solution and easily plug it into the environment? MENT really is built on an infrastructure to be able to empower every user to be able to not only construct, but to develop the clause libraries that, that are approved internally. It has a very simple user interface. You're going to see as Corey goes through the, the presentation, it is very slick and, and not a whole lot of choices, and that is by design. It is to keep it very, um, very straightforward and um, being able to produce what it needs to produce without having a, a whole lot of extras. No installation or setup investment. Um, you know, when you look at other solutions and, and even the time um, wasted in order to, to interact with legal counsel at times because things are manual, um, there, there is a, a really small um, expense to be able to plug this into the environment and, and be up and running. It's very widget driven. Um, so um, being comfortable again with a lot of users tapping into the solution to leverage the, the document library per se for any of the items that may need to be delivered. And it's extremely scalable. Um, you know, we focus on, on legal, but this solution also can, can serve in various areas. Think of documents that you're always reconstructing, um, that you're questioning yourself if they are the most current version. Um, some of you may use M files templates. This is a step I would say above because you can also have deci decision making within the interface that Corey will illustrate today. So with that, and before we go into our demonstration, I just wanted to take an opportunity to pause here to see if there's any questions yet on M files and their new offering called Mint. Nope, <clears throat> nothing so far, Tracy. All right, Corey, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. And if you want mine to take over and uh, give everybody a first-hand look. Good morning, everyone. All right, so as Tracy has stated, Mint is a step above what I believe M-Files built in template creation can do. I will um, 
primarily be focusing on the this first two options here, the automate templates and generate documents. Um, so when users first log into Mint, this is the home page that they will be seeing. Now the options available will be different depending on the permission levels of users. So let's start with um, generate documents here. So we'll go ahead and start with the subcontracting agreement. So this is a template that we have uploaded. Now, any of the red text is actually a question that will need to be answered. So as you can see on the right-hand side, I have customer information, customer name, business ID, and customer address. And as we fill these out, you can see the document will auto-populate the information. We'll just answer a couple questions here. So as this, these questions get answered, the document will auto-populate any fields related to customer, business ID, or address. Now, you, as you can see, these are open text fields. You can also utilize sections. This, for example, is this a supplemental or an independent contractor. If I hit yes, it'll actually update the document with the headers to, in to include that. So if I switch this to no, this is not an independent contractor, that section is no longer in the document. Now, if we keep going here, if we do hourly services, this will actually be a nested question. So, for example, in this agreement, are we saying this is a lump sum or is this an hourly service? If we do lump sum, we can just say 10,000 and it will update the document accord accordingly. So, you can't have nested questions inside clauses um, or block automations, which I will show here very shortly. Now, Non-compete. Now, we wouldn't have a non-compete necessarily in a, an agreement like this, but just to show you, this is actually pulling from a clause library. So based upon a selection, I can say yes or no, and it will pull that data directly from the clause library. Now, if the clause is updated, that update would apply across all templates. Now, same thing with the governing law. As you can see, based upon selections, it will actually change the document accordingly. Now, with date, you can also have this formatting be, for example, day, month, year. There's different formats you can do for this as well. But as you can see, I the first question I answered was customer name. It Anywhere it found a link to customer name, it auto-populated that data. Now, once the document has actually been created, we can save to the archive or we can download as a doc file or a PDF. Let's go to the top here. Now, if we want to generate this document, there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can do that directly from the Mint home screen. We can generate a link and for example, if this is something that we needed customer information on, like these first couple questions, I can actually uncheck all these boxes and then say, do I want the customer to be able to, or the user I'm sending the document to, to be able to download the document? If I hit no here, I can send myself a notification when they have answered the questions and I can view that in the archive. I can send them a direct link. So for example, if I was to take this link, now the questions I have are just the, the customer information questions that I had specified that I would like them to answer. Or I can email a link to the user directly from the portal. 
So we can do a link or we can do a widget. You can utilize this HTML code. You can put that in your SharePoint or if you have another website that you'd like to add it to, you can do that as well. And this is exact. This is essentially what it would look like on the user's end. You would have the document name, and then they would have a create document button, and it would load up just like this here. And then there's some advanced settings along with that. It gives them an expiration. You can set expiration dates. You can do a couple of different things. Um, with the the widgets that you don't have available to the link. So you we've noticed what mint actually looks like. Now you could also do a QR code which I actually created one. If you want to scan this with your phone's camera, you can actually see mint for yourself on your mobile device or tablet. Um just let me know how long you want me to leave this up here um, and I can do that. I'll give everybody a couple seconds here to to snap a shot of that. Okay, so on the mobile device, you'll notice that you will have a preview section and a question section just like we had with the document itself. So essentially at the top, you will have a questions tab and then you will also have a preview tab. And as you fill up the questions, the document will auto populate on the preview tab. So that gives you an idea of the power and the capabilities of Mint. Now the question here lies how easy it is to set this up. So, for example, I have, we'll minimize this a little bit. We'll go new template here. I have my document right here. I will simply drag it over. And as you can see, it's uploaded. We'll do some contract agreement. Demo. Now we can add a document style. If there's an internal company doc style that you have that includes fonts, um, text size, things like that, you can actually configure that in the style section. Um, I will run through that at the end, but you can set your company style based upon um, whatever you use internally. So we'll just do basic for now. You can add categories. So if you are dealing with a lot of documents, you might have a category for HR or agreement or legal. Tags are just going to be, uh, think of that like uh, just quick tips that you can search for when you're looking for your template. So statement of work, scope of work, um, agreement. And as you fill these out, it'll add it to the list and then we will create our template. All right, so with Mint, filling out data is as simple as we, we recognize what we want to automate. So we would select it. Now we have different types of automation here. Inline automation is going to be a selection that the user will have to auto populate data on the document block automation will automate if they want to see or hide a specific paragraph and free text fields is just a text box that the user will have to fill out so if i want to automate this first section of data here the name the business id and the address i would just say these are free text fields I would add a question. We'll call this customer information. And this is the customer name. Next, and I am going to link these two together. So customer name is linked to customer name. And it's as easy as that. Now, if I need to, I can come in here and say, oh, well, I need to add business ID. And 
we'll add address as well. So then now I want to automate business ID. I would simply highlight the text, do free text field. I can do a new question or I will use my existing question. That's under customer information. And I would just say, this is the business ID. And we will do the same thing with address. So now, if we were to preview this, I would have my question of customer ID, and we can fill it out accordingly. Now, let's say that we have our independent contractor status. We can, if we want to say, we want to have a question that says, is this an independent contractor? We would simply highlight the text. This is a block automation. And we'll just say independent. Well, if I could spell correctly. Independent contract door. Okay. Now I can do this as a single choice or multiple choice. We'll use single choice and we'll just say our, our answers are going to be yes and no. So now, if we look at this, we want to say, we want to show this section if the user selects yes. And as you can see, it highlighted everything in yellow. So now, if we go back to our document, if, as you can see, section four is not independent contractor, but if I select yes, Mint will update the heading and add that doc that block text in to the document. Now, if let's say, for example, we can do block text for here. So we can say, we want block automation on this, and we'll add a new question. We'll just say price. Again, if you did, you can do single choice or multiple choice. If we do multiple choice here, we can say our ants will do this as hourly. And we'll do this as lump sum. This is hourly, so we will select hourly. And now if we highlighted the second section, we'll use our existing question and add that to lump sum. So as you can see with block automation, instead of having a yes, a single select value, I now have block selections where I can select them both and they will both show on the document. Now the end line automation is, we'll say that we'll just do supplier here if we did inline automation we'll just do this as test now again with inline automation we can have a single choice or multiple choice if we did single choice we can just do just to show you here so now and we'll just say yes. If they select yes, we'll add that, that on there. Now, if we look at that section down here at the bottom, if we hit yes, it'll actually add that in there. So inline automation and block automation are very, very similar. Uh, block automation is going to be used for uh, paragraphs. Inline automation is going to be used for an or statement. So if we were to look at our subcontract agreement that we have already completed, just to show you what inline automation is in an actual environment, uh, we have this governing law section here. Now, if I was to select governing law for PRC, 
I now have an inline automation question saying, is it in, accord in accordance with arbitration rules? So I'll say ICC rules of arbitration. And what it will do is it will complete that based upon my selection. Now, any documents that are created will be shown in the archive. So if a user is answering questions and you have them answering well, uh, customer information, that will be shown here in the archive. So once they answer their questions, you can pull that up from the archive. Document styles is where you would set up your specific company styles to include font, font sizes, headings, and clause library is where you would have clauses. So, for example, this is my non-compete clause that I added to the document. Anytime I change this, it will update all the templates accordingly. Another nice thing about Mint is if you ever have questions, they do have a video section at the top that gives very intricate and informative videos on how to automate a document, for example automate free text fields. So all this is directly on the home page. It's very easy to find and very easy to follow. The nice thing with Mint is you don't have to have a technical background to actually automate documents. Um, you would upload your document and put the fields that you would like and you're done. Now, the, if I was to send a link again, this is done via a link so it would look just like the app and also the qr code but on this one i have not set specific fields that i want the end user to complete so once this is completed i can agree to the terms now i have this set to you can actually disable this to where you can have the have it set to where the customer or end user cannot download the doc and then save my progress with, again, store that document in the archive. So now that I've ran through Mint, does anyone have any questions about Mint? Um, before I get to that, uh, there is one thing, there is no direct integration with M-Files yet. Um, that is actually in the works. Um, so these fields, if we were to generate a document, for example, in the in the pipeline, they are planning on having it to where these can be pulled from an external data source. So, for example, if I put customer name in, in the future, it'll auto propagate business ID and customer address and so on and so forth. Um, then they're also planning on adding a. I don't don't want to call it necessarily a widget, but a the ability from within M files to generate a Mint session. So you could pass metadata from Mint to M files or vice versa. And then you would also have the capability to save directly to M files from Mint. Currently, that is not in play. Uh, it is a standalone solution currently but they are uh, estimating by end of year to have that capability built in. All right, does then now questions or would anyone like to see anything in particular? Um, if you'd like to have a demo of your own documents, you can contact your sales rep and we can set that up for you. Thanks, Corey. Nice job. Well, we actually have a number of questions that have come in here in the last uh, couple minutes. So. Uh, the first question, uh, I'll, I'll take this question. Um, it was, is the M-Files Mint license included in, in our enterprise license? Um, the answer to that is no. Uh, M-Files is, I'm sorry, Mint is an add-on. So think of Mint as a, like a hub share for those of you that are using hub share. It is an add-on uh, module and uh, we can definitely provide pricing um, to anybody that is interested in that. The second question, Corey, you already answered it. You know, does Mint integrate with M files? Um, not at this time, but that is absolutely something that is in development right now. Never like to put timelines on development, but we have been told uh, at a very high level that uh, the they're looking to have that integration completed by the end of this calendar year. Uh, 
The next question is the documents shown so far look like word. Is there a way to use meant with other applications like Excel? I don't know the answer to that one, Corey or Tracy, do you, or we might have to get back on that. Yeah, I don't have an answer on that, but we definitely can, uh, can uh, get back to that question and post it even with our recording. Perfect, perfect. Um, let's see here. Can the user filled document be saved online and retrieved by our staff instead of download and I assume email to us? Corey, do you want to take that one? I apologize. I was muted um, the whole time after that. Um, to go back to the previous question, yes, currently it is only you have to use a docx file. Uh, I have not heard about uh, them expanding that to Excel files or any other uh, doc type. Now, the question about the document being saved or stored from the Mint portal, you have an archive section. So if a end user completes any fields, it would actually show in the archive here. Um, so, for example, these are two documents that I have generated via a link. And this is a document that was generated via a widget, whether that be a QR code or uh, HTML code. So, I can see this from here. Now, I did not complete this, another um, user did. So from here, I can save this document back to the archive or as an admin, I can download this document. There currently, I haven't heard of anything of them being able to store to another repository. Um, we can for sure ask that question though. But as of right now, the documents would appear in the archive section of Mint. But they could be downloaded to a local desktop and then Correct. Uh, uploaded into M files or a different repository. Correct. All right. Let's see here. Uh, just to reiterate, um, the M, the Ment, so M files acquired the software company Ment, which is the application that Corey has been demonstrating here. Um, it is not included in any M files licensing. It's actually an add-on available for for users and for companies that wish to use it. Um, and we can definitely have uh, conversations about that offline uh, on pricing. Uh, another question just popped up. Is there a capability for the user to attach documents to the file as part of the process? Example, fill out an application for service and attach a driver's license. Currently, no. I don't believe so. I can check on that as well. Um, I'm just trying to think in my head in terms of configuration if that is a, a feasible, but when the user is filling out it, they only have questions. Um, I can foresee that being a useful benefit. Um, I will reach out to our our partner to see if that is something that is in the pipeline. If not, we can add that in as a uh, uh, a recommendation or uh, an enhancement request. Awesome, looks like somebody else had chimed in here, Corey, that that would be uh, extremely beneficial for them as well if they can attach a file. Yeah, um, um, another nice thing about it, um, attaching files that Mint can do. So for example, if I have my my, for example, my subcontracting agreement here, and let's say there's a packet of documents that are all individual currently, you can actually add another file to this. So if I wanted to have a non-disclosure agreement added onto this document, I could drag that file here and I can automate them as one packet, not separate individual documents or links. So. Excellent. Um, another question came in, and I believe the answer to this is it cannot be done at this time, but something we probably can uh, bring in as a future request. Can calculations be done within the fields of MENT? For example, if you fill in one in field one and two in another field, can MENT calculate the sum of three? MENT cannot, 
but um, once the integration with M files is in play, the our Marco automated process module, which is another add-on, would be able to facilitate that. Sure, sure. All right, and then uh, just to to clarify, um, there are three different uh, platforms of M files, if you will. There's M for licensing. To be clear, there's M files online. There's M files editions, and there's M files platform. And we have all of our customers here in the webinars. One of you're all on one of those different platforms. All the same different functionality, or the same functionality, I should say. It's just the way that M files is licensing. Mint is compatible in any of those uh, M files platforms and additions. And I'm just looking through the questions here. Great questions, great feedback. We have a few things to bring to the development team at M files for future enhancements. We'll be sure to do that. And uh, anybody else has any questions, please enter them in the chat box. And I think. Uh, for the sake of time here, Tracy and Corey, let's uh, move on to the final PowerPoint slides. Fantastic. Let me stop sharing here. All right, Tracy, you might be muted. All right, sorry about that. For anybody who uh, hasn't heard or didn't get an opportunity to participate in our first uh, interactive user quick tip sessions, we launched that back in June. Uh, it is hosted monthly. We are trying to shoot for the third Tuesday of every month. It is live instruction with our solutions trainer, Dave Anderson. It really is meant to provide anybody quick tips uh, in the solution to be able to do certain functions. So really good for people who have used M files for some time. You might pick up on, on some other strategies and or even new staff. So invites did go out yesterday. If you did not receive that, feel free to reach out to our solutions uh, software at marconet.com and we will get that invite over to you. But again, we're going to uh, be doing these monthly. They are 30 minutes in total, 15 minutes of uh, walkthrough on how to's. And it is live um, where you actually can ask live questions if you are brave enough to do that and or chat. Uh, there's absolutely no cost to attend. It is um, our offering to you as we want to make sure that you are comfortable in um, everything and anything in M files and uh, would love to uh, continue to walk uh, along with you in that journey. So please uh, engage with that. It, uh, we did get really good feedback as we uh, started last, uh, last month and hope that attendance only continues to grow. Technical resources, again, this recording will be posted up to our M -Files, uh, Marco M Files website location with a link being sent out to everybody as well. Uh, these will be uh, clickable as, as you retrieve, but ultimately there is a variety of different areas for you really to tap into anything that you might want to um, strengthen, anything that you might want to be more aware of from the MFILES web knowledge base to user guide to the community is a really good resource, and then basic troubleshooting. What happens if I get this there or that there? We have a guide out there to be able to uh, direct you to. And then um, we are uh, just starting to develop uh, a new help center. Um, and that help center will be an interactive searchable database of, um, again, things that you might find in your day-to-day -day use of M files and hopefully give you some answers along the way um, with that. So um, always we are here as, as your service provider, do not hesitate to reach out to us. I will end with this QR code, which will bring you right to some of our resources on the, the website, along with a reminder here uh, of the lucky winner that Kurt will hopefully um, be able to help with drawing. But do reach out to us at software at marconet.com. Doesn't matter, matter whether it's um, anything service related or sales related, we'll make sure that we get it into the right hands. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kurt and 
we will announce the winner. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Sorry we extended our time here by about 10 minutes, but do the drawing here quick for the gift card. And the winner is Jeff W. Congratulations, Jeff. I'll be sending you an email and I uh, should have the electronic gift card in your inbox in the next uh, couple days. Thank you thank again. You. Oh, go ahead, Gert. No, you I was just going to say thanks, thanks again, everybody. Certainly appreciate uh, you attending, and please reach out with anything we can help. Have a great rest of your day.